Hello everyone, and welcome to my 10HP Fire Cape Guide. So in this video, I'm just going to be uh, discussing some tips and tricks to help you guys get to the uh, fight cave at 10HP. I'm not going to go like a full-on guide through the entire cave. I'm just going to discuss certain waves and things you're going to need to know to successfully get through the cave at 10HP. So without further ado, let's get right into the guide. So with your inventory and setup, you're going to want to go for the highest range defense bonus while also maintaining a high uh, prayer bonus. So obviously you need the Serp Helm, Skill Cape, Fury, Bandle's Chest Plate, Varrox Play Skirt, Bandle's Boots, uh, some kind of Van Braces, uh, Guthix's Crozier, and a DFS. Make sure the DFS is charged also, really helps your stats go up more. And then in your actual inventory, you're going to need Purple Sweets, 5 Guthix Rests, 2 Anchovy Pizzas, two Ceridome and Brews, and then the rest of your inventory is going to be Super Restores. We all get lost sometimes, you know. In a 10 HP fight cave, conserving prayer and luring monsters around is extremely important if you want to be successful. So the first thing I want to talk about are the two basic safe spots that we're going to be using in this fight. So the first one is the West Rock on the southern side. I'll mark it on the screen while I'm talking about this, but right there, if you're along the edge of the rock, the monsters will get stuck at the east end of it, which is extremely important and helpful. I'll go into more detail later on in the guide, but just keep in mind that's one of the one of the two basic safe spots we're gonna use. And then the other safe spot you can use is the northern rock on the west side of it. You can also get monsters stuck at the edge of that rock. So that's just really helpful and just keep that in mind as we go further into this guide. So now that we have the two basic safe spots out of the way, we need to discuss how to safe spot the rangers and the mages so you can conserve prayer throughout the fight cave. The main way to do this is get them stuck along the western rock. The way you do that is simple. You just run to the northwestern corner of the cave and then run around to the south side of the rock. You could also switch it up and do it the opposite way by going to the southwestern corner and running to the north of the rock. If you do this right, the ranger or mage, depending on where you are in the cave, will get stuck on the opposite side of the western rock, and that way you can worry about all the rest of the monsters that are in the cave first. The other way to get the rangers and mages stuck is to trap them behind at least more than one monster while you're in the northern safe spot. To do this, just make sure you at least have either the 45 or the 180, one of the melees, get stuck in the front of the rock before the rangers or majors get to you. If you do this right, if you stand all the way in the northern corner of the uh, northern rock, the range or mage should not be able to hit you. That way you can effectively safe spot them there as well. So take a deep breath and let it go. Waves 22 through 29 are when a ranger and a melee are going to be spawning in at the same time. These waves are really simple, but there's a few things we need to go over. First off, make sure you start each wave by the western rock safe spot that we talked about earlier in this video. Second, always make sure you're protecting range at the beginning of each wave, and don't take protect range off until you know for sure the ranger is stuck somewhere where he can't hit you. So the thing you need to look out for when the wave starts is if the melee spawns next to you. If the melee spawns next to you, as I talked about earlier in this video, you need to run to the north and do the safe spot that I talked about where you get a melee stuck on the edge of the northern rock and then the ranger will come up behind them. And then if you run all the way into the northern corner, you'll be able to be safe from the ranger. However, if the melee does not spawn next to you, you can do the same exact thing that you do at the northern rock, but you can do it at the western rock. So make sure the melee gets stuck on the edge of the rock first then run into the western corner and the ranger will be in a spot where you can venom him if you want but then walk back and be safe without using prayers. I have this section marked as 22 through 29 but you use the same strategy throughout the rest of the fight caves. Whenever a melee is going to be spawning in you need to check to your south to make sure he doesn't spawn next to you. If he does you need to instantly run north and use that safe spot. And then if he doesn't spawn next to you, throughout the entire cave, you need to make sure that at least the 180 or the 45 gets stuck in the safe spot, in the western safe spot first, so that you can conserve your prayer by safe spotting the range or mage without using prayer. I won't let go. 
Waves 30 through 45 are when the fight caves start to get interesting. This is when a mage and a range are going to be spawning in at the same time. This means that you're going to have to tank range hits. A ranger's max hit is 13, so this is where the Guthix Rest, Bruise, and Anchovy Pizzas come into play. As every wave in this fight cave, you want to start in the western safe spot. That's probably the safest spot to start each wave. Always drink a brew before these rounds and have protect from a mage on. When the wave starts, the first thing you want to make sure you do is just make sure your HP is always above 13. What I'd recommend doing is not drinking a Guthix Rest until you hear a range shoot at you because there are some cases where the range will already be stuck for you or in a safe spot and you want to save your Guthix Rest as much as you possibly can. So as always, make sure if the range hits you, you're at least 15 HP. If you start to get hit really hard, you can Anchovy then Guthix Rest to instantly boost your HP up to 15. But besides all that, Keep your HP up and focus on getting either the range or the mange somewhere safe where he won't be able to hit you. I'd recommend using one of the two lures I talked about, whether it be running into the corner of the fight cave and just luring him around the entire western rock, or getting him stuck behind one of the melees either in the western or northern rock. Either way, you need to focus on getting at least one of them stuck. Once one of them is stuck, just venom one of them wait for him to die, and then move on to the other one. It's actually pretty simple once you get used to it, but the biggest concern is that you just need to make sure that your HP is always above 15 when a range is shooting you. Because they can hit 13s, and trust me, they hit very hard. Waves 53 through 60, definitely the hardest waves of the entire fight cave. You're going to have majors, rangers, and melees all spawning at the same exact time. A lot of it's luck based, but basically what you need to do is combine both sections that we just talked about, 22 through 29, which was discussing how to deal with melees, and 38 through 45, discussing how to tank range hits. You need to combine both those sections and use them both on 53 through 60. So to recap, the first thing you want to do is have protect from mage on, drink a brew, and check to see if a melee spawns right next to you while you're in the western safe spot. If one spawns next to you, you instantly need to run to the north and use that safe spot. At the same time this is going on, you need to make sure you listen and if you hear a range shooting at you, you need to instantly drink a Guthix Rest because you have to always have your HP above 13. Basically if you end up having to run north, just do the same strategy I talked about earlier where you get either a 45 or a 180 stuck in front or I guess on the edge of the northern rock, then run all the way back and just slowly venom whichever one's up front, whether it's the range or the mage, and just focus on one of them at a time. If a melee doesn't spawn right next to you, you can stay at the western rock for the safe spot. Of course, you always need to have protect from mage on, and you always need to be listening to hear the uh, range shoot at you. If you hear the range shoot at you, drink your Guthix Rest, make sure your HP is above 13. So, the first thing you need to focus on if you stay at the western rock, it's the same as the northern rock. You need to get a 45 or a 180 stuck at the front of the safe spot. That way you can sit in the back without getting hit by anything. So this means that you're probably going to have to tank range hits before a melee gets stuck up front. But as soon as one of the 45s or one of the 180s gets stuck, instantly run back and then venom whichever, whether it's the range or the mage, whichever one's up front. Get him venomed, wait for him to die, then move on to the next one and just keep going until all the monsters are dead. Like I said earlier, a lot of these are just luck based spawns, but just do the best you can. They're definitely the hardest waves of the entire fight cave. Before you go on to Jad on wave 63, you need to pay attention to where the orange colored mage spawns on wave 62. To do this, right before wave 62 starts, run out into the middle and just look around the entire map until you see where the orange one spawned in, or at least in the general direction. Wherever the orange one spawned in, this is where Jad will spawn in for you. In my game, he spawned in just south of the Italy rock, which is the perfect spawn for Jad. This means I could easily have him safe spotted without having to do any lure. If you don't get as lucky as me, you'll have to uh, run around the entire fight cave and get Jad stuck somehow on the southern side of the Italy rock, which is the east rock if you don't know that. 
But either way, hope for the best spawn. If he doesn't spawn to the south of the Italy rock, you're gonna have to lure him. But once you get him over there, it's pretty simple from there. Now all you have to do is the same thing you've been doing the entire fight cave, is Venom Jad. The only difference is Jad cannot be Venomed, instead he'll be hit by poison. This means that Jad's healers won't spawn because you're not actually inflicting damage on him, it's just the poison, so you don't have to worry about the healers. But basically, all you need to do is creep around the corner, keep flicking your prayers, and just pay attention to his poison. But really try to focus on your prayers. It's not a priority to get him poisoned right away and just instantly get back to the safe spot. If you mess up one prayer, the entire fight cave is over and you wasted over 5 hours of your life. So yeah, no pressure. But either way, once you get him poisoned, you run back to the safe spot and you should be able to see the poison hit splats popping up from the other side of the rock. Once the poison starts to hit 2, you need to walk back out and re-poison Jad. Once again, just make sure you focus on your prayer flicking and try to stay calm. In my game, I had to poison Jad 4 times before he died. Right after the 4th one, probably about 15 seconds in, Jad ended up dying. So in all honesty, it really isn't that much prayer flicking. I guess I did get lucky because Jad was already in a safe spot for me, but either way, if you've done Jad before and you stay calm, it shouldn't be a problem. Just focus on your prayers and stay calm. And this concludes my 10 HP Fire Cape Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. Also, shout out to anybody that was at the stream. I had like over 700 viewers and even had the man himself, Bodhi, tweet out my account. So thanks, man. Appreciate that. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.